Hey, hello there, everybody, and welcome to our Frozen Frontier prequel. And Sean is going to be playing Ferris today, and he's going to be the focus of today's entire session. So don't worry about the other three players. They're not dead. We're just taking a look back in time at how Ferris became the person he is today. Or at least one of the influencing events in his life. I mean, they might not be alive. I am kind of old. How old are, is Ferris? Uh, right now, he's like 15, so this is 30 years back. Okay, so this is quite a while ago. Yeah. So in-game, in the, the main storyline, Ferris is like 45? Uh, yeah, 44 or 45. I can actually pull my sheet really fast. I should do that. <laughs> All right. Um, there are a few questions that we need to get out of the way right away that I don't have answers to, but we need answers to. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, what is the name of your hometown? Oh, that's a that's a great question. Uh, oh, God, I don't know. You have such weird names for all the places in Drekus. Uh Yeah, but it could be some sort of little village somewhere. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be a major town. It probably should be some small little village off in the corner of mm -hmm. uh, things. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh God, names. I'm bad at names, Neil. All right. This well, is why how, how's what's your mother's name? <laughs> you're you're asking like that's better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, names are probably like the bane of my existence when it comes to RPGs. Okay. Just name these things for me. I trust you on this one. All right, you come from the town of Ditchwater. Perfect. A little village. Uh, and your mother is named after Martha, the goddess. So your mom's name is Martha. Cool. Okay. Isn't that the uh, the same one as the superhero movie that just came out, the Batman versus Superman? I don't know. Like... Was there a character named Martha in there? Yeah, isn't Superman's like name Martha, and then Batman's uh, mother's name is Martha? And then, like, Batman's going to kill Superman. He's like, tell Martha I love her. And then he's like, oh, my God, his mom has the same name as me. And then he can't kill him anymore. I it was a bad the, movie. I didn't <laughs> see the film. <laughs> but apparently, Batman's mother is Martha Wayne. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was a bad movie. No, don't, <laughs> don't worry about it, Nick. It was, a, it was a shitty movie. You're not missing anything. I, that's why I barely remember it. It was not worth paying attention to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got to the point before the story starts, because we're starting the story with you on your own after your mother leaving you. Yeah, um, let's see, so Ferris probably like grew up probably like a little bit on the outskirts of this town, like the small village, like maybe, you know, five minutes out of the village. So he's not like mixed in with the population, really. He, uh, he just kind of grew up a little bit in isolation from them. Uh, raised by his mother alone, and then eventually he just, he learned how to hunt, he's kind of become a little bit more self-sufficient, and he woke up one day and his, his mom was just kind of gone. Uh, she left her saber that she, that she always traveled with, she left that as, like, a, a gift for him, but there was, like, no goodbye or letter or anything, she just kind of picked up and left one day. Wow, and, uh, so literally just waking up and... Yeah. Mom's gone. Yeah. Okay, uh, so how long before, how long ago before the events of this campaign or today's session was that? Have you uh, probably just like a day or two? That's why I was thinking for like why this would happen. Like he he just kind of woke up, like made breakfast, and he made way too much food for breakfast, mm -hmm. and just kind of like you know reality sort of set in. He's like, I gotta get out of the house. I gotta I gotta go find something to do. He wants to find something to occupy his mind with. Okay. Uh, and you said you're about 15 years old right now. So what is your yes. position in this little village? Uh, do you have friends? Are you going to school? Are you, were you homeschooled? Is schooling not a part of your education? Yeah, I think she taught. I think his schooling was mostly like his mom teaching him about elven culture and history mm -hmm. was most of it. Um, in the village. Uh, he probably does the hunting, honestly, at that point. Like, he, he's probably been practicing and training to become, like, a hunter and gather food for the village. Like, he doesn't, he's mo he's fairly isolated, so there's only a couple humans in the place where he really has any sort of interaction with them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's probably hunting at that point, like, I would imagine. Just kind of goes all in on that skill. 
Okay. okay. And you said she left her saber behind? Yes. It was like her, her saber that she traveled with and she left it behind and you just kind of found it. Uh, do you have a, a bow of your own? Or is that yeah. something that she took yeah, with her? Yeah, we probably, we probably made one, honestly, since I was going out hunting. So that means you've got uh, a saber, which you are yes. proficient with at this point, or specialized with at this point. You are pretty young. Um, I could go with either. Yeah. Uh, you know, specialization might help make the mechanics of this this session a little bit easier. But I think but for up to maybe you. story reasons, why don't we have you start without a specialization? Sure, uh, I could do proficient with a saber and proficient with a bow. Yeah, that sounds great. And then great. nothing with a uh, with a copesh right now. Right. Um. And you probably don't have any armor as a hunter, right? There's not a lot of there's not a lot of people killing you or attacking you. They're sure. probably just your normal clothes. Could do that, or like for armor, either way. Yeah, or maybe some sort of like a leather jerkin that you wear that could give sure. AC thirteen. All right, I can do that. Yeah, some sort of like leather outfit to keep you yeah, protected like from the maybe, bushes. Probably and yeah, probably not as hardcore as his uh, his winter gear, but he might have something. Yeah, you know, doesn't want to get like gored by a boar when he's out in the woods, and right, and you don't want to like walk, have to walk through a, a blackberry bush and get all prickled and stuff. So you need yeah. something to help you out. Okay, cool. And in the village, do you have any friends, uh, or are you just kind of a uh, loner? mostly a loner? Would be would be my guess. Like he kind of grew up around humans, and he only knows a couple of them. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a little bit isolated, I guess, most of his life. So uh, let's jump in. Let's bring down the nice peaceful music and bring up the town music. All right. Uh, so it is a fairly regular day in this mm -hmm. little town, except for the fact that uh, your mom disappeared, totally left you, Just vanished a couple days ago. And uh, what, what have you been doing in the... 36 to 72 hours since she disappeared. Um, probably trying to stay as busy as possible. Like, doing, like, really hard work, trying to keep his mind off things. Just kind of, like, trying to uh, work until he's too tired to really think about it. And then just kind of go into the next day. Well, it is the next day when you start hearing the, the church bells in town go crazy. They just okay. start ringing left and right. Yeah, um, I mean, I... I think he's smart enough to react to that like anybody else. He grabs like his sword and his bow, uh, mm -hmm. probably like takes a minute to get his armor on and starts running for the church. Okay. You come into the little village to see everyone kind of gathering around the church uh, as things start to get quiet a little bit. Mm -hmm. Standing up on a, a small little platform outside the church where people would kind of give speeches or if there's some sort of town meeting that needs to be held, that's the, the standing platform, the, the soapbox. Uh, there is the village elder. He's this older man uh, somewhere in his late 60s. He's kind of short, kind of scrawny and has a is known for being overly cautious, maybe even borderline timid. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Dingus. Uh, and uh, he's there with uh, a family next to him, a uh, husband and wife. I would very much like you to make me a charisma check at this point to see if you can recognize who the husband and wife are. All right, give me like five seconds because I forgot to hit join game after Frozen Frontier. That two-step process. Log in, join game, yeah. All right. Plus eight for me. 16, probably, probably not. Uh, yeah, you're looking at these people and you're like, I, I should know them. They live in town, but mm -hmm. oh, who knows? Uh, anyway, so as everyone gathers up and as the, the town quiets down to hear them, Dingus says in his kind of crackling voice, Ahem! People of Ditchwater, we have a, a problem. Jonathan and Margaret, please speak up. Uh, and the parents, the, the adults here, step up to the soapbox uh, with kind of wild and desperate eyes. They look around and say, uh, our daughter, little Phoebe, they say, kind of motioning to a, a smallish person, was 
captured by goblins. The, the mother's voice cracks and she looks away. The father pulls out of a little pack at his hip a small, greenish, oily hand uh, and says, uh, this, this is the hand of one of the goblins that took our little girl. Our, our loyal dog, Jack, managed to rip it from the beast before he died, but God, they skewered him and, and took her. Whole crowd is it, is yeah, silent. people just kind of like murmuring. Yeah. Um, hmm. um, after a moment, they say, we, some, we need to form a posse or something and, and, and go fetch her. Uh, and immediately, the kind of big, strong man in town, a guy by the name of Tyrone, he's in his late 20s or something. He's like 6'4", 200 pounds, maybe 220, but he's like buff. He's mm-hmm. very strong. He's also yeah. kind of an aggressive, uh, loud, braggart, mean-spirited sort of guy. Yeah, I know. Like uh, Tyrone the Indestructible. We all know him. I don't know that. I was thinking Tyrone the Tyrant, the <laughs> no. kid's book about the dinosaurs. No, no, no. no. I, I just, I always like to add fun, uh, fun titles. Mm. Oh, okay. he's, yeah, he's, he's the Indestructible. Yeah. Got it. Uh, he's got these large, bold tattoos on his biceps, on the back of his shoulder blades, which you can always see because he walks around without his shirt most of the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's got his name across his knuckles, his... Uh, right fist has T Y R across the three middle fingers, and his left fist has O N E across them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Ferris is probably feeling pretty. Um, uh, what's the word for it? not the exact opposite of cautious? I feel like he's kind of in that in that kind of head state where he's going to dive in to a lot of risky s- scenarios. So he probably walks forward as quickly as this Tyrone guy, mm-hmm. and they both walk to the front pretty quickly. Okay. So Tyrone, you guys are walking to the front quickly, but he's bigger and stronger and louder. And he immediately says, I volunteer to go fetch the little girl. Me, being the biggest, the strongest, the smartest, and the best in this village, will save her. Looks around very satisfied with himself. Yeah. And I, uh, <laughs> probably not getting the social cue. Paris Chemson, I will go with him. Make sure that he's safe on the journey. Uh, the crowd moves around a little bit and everyone looks towards you, this social outcast whose mother abandoned him. I think mm-hmm. by now the word has spread throughout town that, oh, you, yeah. you know, that something's up. Uh, and they start to whisper. Tyrone takes a look at you, looks you up and down. How tall are you? Oh, God, I think I'm, like, pretty normal size. 5'7". Okay. So pretty tall for an elf, actually. Yeah. This guy's 6'4", so he's oh, a yeah. good, you know... Four and five. He's a good nine inches taller than you. Yeah. I mean, uh, I am he, still fifteen, so maybe I'm kind of like looking a little bit worried when he gives me that look. And I just mm-hmm. say, I, I, I don't think I could best him in a melee, but I'm, I'm a good shot with a bow. I could keep him covered if he, if he faces a large group. <laughs> you little one. Oh, you couldn't hurt a fly. Don't you just get in my way? I've killed three boars this week. <laughs> oh, he's got spirit. For a semi-human, you know what I mean. Uh, as the rest of the crowd laughs at you for being mm-hmm. called a, a semi-human, the village oracle, Helga, this kind of weird out there girl or woman, mm-hmm. uh, she's in her late 50s, maybe early 60s. She lives in the woods. She's got like sticks in her hair, wild untamed makeup of like blacks and greens and browns uh, with like a hunched over posture and always carrying some weird little like trinkets in her hand. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it's little eyeballs. Sometimes it's beaded jewelry, all sorts of weird stuff. Steps forward claiming, wait, wait. It is by the will of the gods that this child has been taken. If anyone were to go after her, they would be bringing upon themselves a most terrible curse. I think, <laughs> I think Ferris. I, I don't think I ever mentioned in game, but Ferris is uh, not not a believer in in the gods, and he kind of uh, he just says, "Save your curses. We shouldn't leave an innocent child to die at the hands of goblins." Mm. Watch what you wish for, young one. You may find yourself. Did or worse. You will be doomed if you undertake this journey. 
The child is a sacrifice! You can see Tyrone kind of frowning and trying to take a few steps back and blend into the crowd, but of course he's, you know, 6'4 <laughs> and stands out well above everyone else. Uh, as the crowd murmurs, Dingus takes the stage again and says, well, I wouldn't want to go against the gods. Tyrone, my grandson, please, please, stand down. Maybe, maybe we should send this someone less valuable to the village. Without your hard work, we would we would surely be lost. Is there someone else, maybe? I think Ferris to... kind of kind of like bites his tongue a little bit at someone less valuable, and then kind of looks at the uh, the parents of the they, of this this kid. They are terrified. Their nine year old daughter is gone. Mm. Okay, I think at this point, Ferris is just kind of like walk past the crowd and just walk up to the parents directly and ask what direction the goblins went. Uh, the father turns to you and says, "They." They went north, and he hands you the goblin hand, mm -hmm. as if it's somehow supposed to help you on your journey. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if nothing else, it's a good snack. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the cannibalism begins. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, think, I think it's always been there. Oh, God. <laughs> um, the rest of the village is murmuring back and forth to themselves, uh, seemingly forgetting you and the parents, you know, talking about the, the dreadful curse that could be brought down and, oh no, we can't send Tyrone, he's so strong and how are we going to plow the fields? You know, that ox is such a pain in the ass, you really need a strong person to steer him in the right direction and uh, everyone seems to forget you mm -hmm. and Jonathan and Margaret, Phoebe's parents, in the moment. Uh, Margaret, Phoebe's mother, looks to you uh, a little bit worried and says, are you, do you really think you can find her? There were, there were at least five goblins. I'm, I'm one of the best shots in the village. From a good vantage point, I could probably take a few up before they even reached me. She nods. I, I can't make promises, but I can do what I can. She takes a scarf from around her neck and hands it over to you. I, I, I don't, don't have much, but please, as a, a token of my appreciation. Yeah, he takes it and says, thank you. And then, uh, which way do you say they went again? North. North, okay. Uh, I, I can show you to where they they killed my dog. Excellent. I'll, I'll start following them from there. Okay. Do I already have tracking as proficiency? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they lead you back to their village. The kind of sounds of the, the people arguing fade mm -hmm. in the distance. Apparently no one notices that you left, or they noticed and no one wants to step in or say anything because the, the village square keeps the population hurriedly arguing about goblins and what it might mean. Uh, Jonathan and Margaret take you to their farmhouse, which is on the other side of town from yours. I think you mm -hmm. live on the south side, they live on the north side. Okay. Might and, explain why I don't even recognize them. Yeah. And they, they show you to where their dog, Jack, has been just left where he died. There's a, a goblin spear sticking out of it. It's got a, a crude bronze tip on it. Makes basically like a, a lump of bronze that has been pounded into something, um, you know, spearhead shaped, but not particularly well. Mm -hmm. uh, and attached to a not quite straight shaft uh, with just a little bit of uh, leather. Uh, you can see the dog still has greenish goblin blood running down his chin. Or maybe it's, you know, starting to soak. Uh, it's soaked into his fur. Mm -hmm. And there are drops of blood and a clear trail leading through the high grasses to the north. Okay. Uh, even though I probably am not good at tracking by scent, I think Ferris probably thinks it'll uh, it'll look impressive if he, like, you know, smears off a little bit of the goblin blood and sniffs it to try and get their, like, get their scent mm -hmm. and starts to follow them into the woods. It's wretched smelling. Mm -hmm. It almost makes you gag. It's the sort of scent stench that you feel like will permeate and ruin clothing, kind of like cigarette smoke, like that sort mm -hmm. of permeation, but of course, smelling like goblin blood. Okay, I uh, think Ferris thinks twice about uh, cooking the hand. Yeah. And yeah, he just, uh, he starts following them north into the woods. Okay. Uh, Jonathan and Margaret don't call out to you. They don't follow you. They just kind of stand behind and mm -hmm. watch as you walk away and head into yeah, the woods. Yeah, and I... Uh, I, I actually stopped for a second and say, how long ago was this? Less than an hour. Maybe Very an well. hour at most. 
Very well, they shouldn't have gotten too far then, and I turn back and start to head into the woods. Um, the trail is fairly clear. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still going to make you roll a tracking it's check, but yeah, there should be some serious advantages. Um, I'm going to say there are uh, thick brush, vines, oh. reeds, so it should give you a plus three. That would be a success. <laughs> and every two creatures since in the group, there are at least five, so another plus two on top of that. Okay, so then I do pass. Okay, so yeah, 18 plus a bunch of things, you're fine. Yes. Um, the trail is, you know, there are a few moments where it looks like you're going to lose it but you, you keep it in sight the whole way mm -hmm. through. Uh, yeah, like, not not quite following the footprints, but I find, like, some broken branches and twigs and stuff, and I just go, you know, mm -hmm. thankful that there's so much, uh, so much, like, just, like, brush and things to, uh, to follow here. Yeah. Start going through. Uh, the trail keeps kind of heading north and then curving to the east a little bit, where you know that there's a, a large river kind of near the, the foot of these hills, uh, I mean, the river's maybe not that large, but it's a deep canyon. Maybe mm -hmm. 30 feet across, maybe 20 feet deep or so, and it's just like a, a big raging river down there. There are only a few places where you can pass it. Um, these footprints, this track, appears to be leading to the, the one good bridge. The other places are fords, you know, a few miles upriver and a few miles downriver. Take you hours mm -hmm. to get there, um, but that they're, the they're the only other places that would be crossable. Um, okay, so the bridge seems like the only viable way forward. Right, and these tracks are looking like they're heading straight for the bridge. Okay, so 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 the ridge is perpen or the the river is like perpendicular to me then, and there's like a little canyon that uh, drops down into it. Yes. Okay, I got it. I, I assumed I was like going alongside it for a second, but that that makes more sense. Yeah, it's more perpendicular. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Um, and you find yourself standing at this bridge. Uh, the only yeah. problem is uh, there's somebody there as well. Yeah, there's that's a... what I was gonna try and like move up to it slowly, like peer down, see if there's anything in the river, and like just you know not not immediately go running across this bridge. Right. As you come into view of the bridge, you see there's a man standing there. He's wearing this. Uh, had tattered leather armor with little scraps of metal on his shoulders or, you know, mm -hmm. the leather's been patched up with a, a piece of plate here or there. So oh, this, this mismatched armor. <laughs> no, it's not Lingus. Uh, but I, if I had the forethought, it might have been. Uh, he's got a, a sword at his side, a short sword, and is kind of just leaning on the bridge. He sees you coming towards him and doesn't make a move. Okay. He keeps looking at you. Yeah, so I think I, like, duck into the bushes for a second, and he's just kind of, like, looking at the bushes where I'm sitting, and after mm -hmm. a couple seconds, I sort of becomes apparent I'm, I'm not getting anywhere by hiding, so I I get up and start to walk toward him and say, Hey, old friend, uh, do I recognize this guy? Give me a charisma check. Sure. Uh, eight for me. <laughs> no. I've never seen him before in your life. I, I slobber down my chin a little bit as I shout out, Hail, friend. Yeah. And uh, I say, tell me, are you are you following goblins? I've been tracking them through these woods. He doesn't say anything. He keeps his stance on the bridge. Okay, I'll uh, I'll walk a little bit closer to him. Okay. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. I I, I start to take a step, and then I I kind of think for a second. And is this guy like moving around? Uh, yeah, he's he's visibly alive. He okay. looks like he's chewing on something. Um, and he's definitely leaning, but his foot's tapping up and down. He, he's a living person. Okay. He's on the bridge? Yes. Uh, do you see the map? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I just pulled it up, and that's okay. why. Okay. So I'll probably head to, like, the start of the bridge, but I don't want to go onto it yet. Okay. And I say, what you brings you out token here? token as you please. Oh, yeah. Go right there. I say, what brings you out here? Or I could go right there. That'll work. Uh, that's far enough there, little guy. This is a, a toll bridge, don't you know? Says is with a, it? A bit of a smile on his face. Uh-huh. Uh, recently issue ordered. Direct from the king himself. 
Nobody crosses this bridge that doesn't pay up a... A silver... Two silver! Across the bridge. Okay. Do I have any money at all? No. Okay. So I, I say... I don't have any money on me, but I'm, I'm hunting important quarry, and I pull out this goblin hand from my pack. And I say, it's imperative that I cross this bridge. Goblins passed it not long ago. Well, that might be the case. And, uh... Huh. uh come, come a little close. Let me see that hand. He starts yeah. to take a step towards you. I'll, I'll get a little bit closer, and then I'll toss it to him. Like, I, I toss it to him before he uh, before he's within, like, five feet of me. Okay. Uh, and I, he... Actually, I'll probably move up a little bit so that we meet a little bit more halfway, if that's cool with you. Like, sure. I was going to go right about there. Yeah, so then he's more like that. Um, so he takes a look at the hand, turns it over, sniffs it, and just chucks it over the side of the bridge. Yeah. Ugh, definitely goblin. Well, there, boy, I suppose if you're hunting goblins, you can... What's wrong with your ears? My ears? Yeah. You deformed or something? You, uh... No. You child? No, I'm part you elven. disabled? Oh. Gives a spit On my mother's the... side. Gives a, a spit towards the ground. Yeah. Well, like I was saying, two silver to cross the bridge. Okay. So... I don't... Ferris doesn't really have time for this, so I'm gonna... S he'll, he'll, like, take a step forward and says, fine, I... I don't have silver, but this should this should do just as fine. And he starts to like reach into his pack and walks up to this guy. I'm gonna try and grab him and throw him over the side of the bridge. Ooh. Okay. Um, That's why I wanted to meet him a little bit more halfway so that he could fall into the water and why not die. Why don't you give me a D10 to see if you surprise him? He is surprised on a one, two, or three. Nope. No. Okay. Uh, so he's not too initiative. terribly surprised. No, you you still get to the attack off first. It's okay. still an ambush of sorts. Okay. Um, but so just make a make me a grab attack plus, at him. Uh, do I get? Is there like a dex bonus for grappling or anything like that? No, it's just a works. straight attack roll. All you need to do is hit his AC ten. Uh, oh, okay. Got yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you make a wild lunge for him, and you see that missing board right in front of your token. Yeah, your foot steps right in there, uh, and you like topple towards him. He takes a, a couple of steps back as you fall flat on your face, mm -hmm. uh, and then. Gives you a chuckle. <laughs> Boy, you want to pull something like that? You're going to, well, you're going to need a little bit more luck on your side. Now, the price just went up from two to five silver. I have no quarrel with you, Sir Knight, but I must cross this bridge. A villager's <laughs> life depends on it. Surely the king would not mind if we go about saving citizens. Sir Knight. <laughs> Yeah, you make me laugh. All right, four silver for you. you. You're a funny one there, kid. I think you misunderstand me. I carry no wealth. Barely any of my village do. We're not, we're not well, flush enough to pay you in silver. Well, then it seems like you're in a bit of a bind. I hear there's a, a ford to the north. Why don't you go walk around that if you can't afford the toll? Very well. And Ferris will start to walk back a little bit. Yeah. And then he pulls out his bow and shoots this guy. All right. Uh, so as you start to pull out your bow, that's where we roll initiative, because <laughs> uh, he sees that happening. And uh... Uh, yeah, I can't really move further than this, but like I right. wanted to go a good to to the point where I could at least get a shot off before he reaches me, and then switch to my my saber. Um, so give me a distance in feet or yards. Uh, pe are we moving in yards for this? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you you can move 120 yards in a round. Okay. So if I if I won the initiative if I lost the initiative roll and it was clear that I was not going to get a shot off before he reached me could I just drop the bow and switch to my saber? Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll just go back like a hundred feet then okay. and try and shoot him from there. Right. Uh, so D10 for that initiative. Six. Um, plus weapon speed. He rolls oh, yeah. a a nine, and I think short sword speed is three. So he rolls uh, it's a seven for bow. So six plus seven, which is I think he'll go slightly first. Yeah. So he goes at twelve. You go at thirteen. Uh, so he takes okay. his short sword and he just starts running at you, okay, giving so a I'll, fearsome yeah. war cry as he does so. Got it. 
uh, you can drop your bow or switch to your yeah. sword as he Ferris charges. is probably looking like he's trying to get a shot off to the last second, and then he just mm -hmm. immediately switches to the saber right before he gets there. All right. The man is in a full-fledged charge. He comes at you, stabs with his short sword, and just completely uh. misses you to the side. <laughs> And like Beautiful. runs past you a little bit with it with his charge before whirling around. Um, now on the other side of you, so I'm just gonna Good. do. I know you guys are a lot farther away from the bridge, mm -hmm. but for yeah, for simplicity's sake. sake. Yeah. And then I'll go and turn around. Yeah. There we go. Uh, all right, and then I guess I'll take a swing back at him with the saber. Okay. Fourteen. You hit him hard. Uh, in and the then I'm side proficient, of... right? Not specialized. Correct. Okay. So that's gonna be D8. Uh, no damage bonus. Two damage. Beautiful. All right. You hit him for two. Uh, and he, his eyes kind of go wide for a moment as you draw blood from his side. Mm -hmm. uh, this clearly is not the outcome he was expecting from this encounter. Mm -hmm. uh, let's roll initiative. All right. Ooh, One. he goes at 13. Okay, so for the saber, I believe that's plus, I forget. I always forget my Probably weapon speeds. Probably five. Uh, I'm pulling it up right now. Speed is five, so yeah, it's six total. Yeah. I keep forgetting to add that. Uh, all right. I'm just going to roll that d20. 15. Another hit. For eight more. All right. He doesn't have, even have time to recover from the first blow before your saber cuts into his side uh, enough that he just drops to his knees and bleeds out on the spot in a matter of awesome. seconds. Yeah, and within seconds, Ferris is uh, probably pulling out a dagger, <laughs> one, one that he had in the village but didn't have. Once he uh, once he left for Caledonia, and starts to uh, carve out a little bit of meat that he can that he can uh, prepare and eat later. Out of the human? Oh yeah. Okay. I was like, about he, to he ask not you. Like I, I don't want to take time on it, but I want to like just carve out a little bit that I can use later. Sure. I, I was like going to say this is probably snack. the first time Ferris has ever killed a person before. Mm -hmm. You've killed boars. You've killed yes animals, but you've just killed a man. Yeah, uh, I think. Um, like, definitely was not thinking about it at the time. And it's maybe dawning on him a little bit as he's, like, carving into this person. And it's kind of like he's starting to freak out a little bit. And then he, like, forces those thoughts out of his head and just keeps doing what he's doing. He takes a little bit of human meat um, and kind of, like, tries to push away how, like, exhilarating the experience of getting into that battle was. And just uh, continues on past the bridge. So for, for you, this wasn't a, like, a, a terrifying, no, life-altering no. moment. This is... Ferris, Ferris enjoyed that, like, eerily much, and he just kind of has that moment of, like, he forces the thoughts out of his head and continues on down the bridge. I think we're definitely learning a little bit more about who <laughs> Ferris is on the inside here. <laughs> um, okay. Well, your, your token is yours. Okay. Um, and uh, you have a map to explore. Uh, let's see. Let me zoom out a little bit so that I... Slightly better field of view. So there's a ooh, there's like a little tent up there that I probably yeah. see once I get to about here. So I don't really want to approach it immediately. In fact, maybe I like go up to this tree and can I see it from here? Yes, definitely. Okay, so I'll like kind of hide behind a trunk or something, or if that's a bush, you know, like behind the bush, and I'll try right. to peer out and see what's going up on up at that tent. Uh, the tent looks old and tattered, but like it's been freshly put into place. You know, it, it's standing mm -hmm. firm and well, uh, but the materials are aged. Okay, uh, and then I'll, I'll wait for like a minute or two. Does there look like there's any activity? No, and it's not okay. that far from the bridge. So the sounds of combat would have... Oh, no, you guys were 100 feet on the other side of the bridge. So yeah. who knows? Uh, oh, actually, on the other side of the bridge, do I pick the trail back up for where the goblins were headed? Yeah, uh, on the ground, you can see that there are kind of two paths leading here. Um, so when you get to the crossroads, you'll have to try and decide which way the goblins went. Okay. Um, hmm. uh, but the okay. little tent seems to be... Well, no one's come out of it yet. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, like, sort of creeping up on this tent, trying to move nice and quiet, and uh, peer inside, like, just kind of, like, crack if there's like a flap to get in mm -hmm. it'll just kind of like move it a little bit and peer inside and see if he sees anything sure why don't you put yourself where you want to be peering in from yeah where is it on the left side that entrance Oops. um i think the so entrances right are these like corner pieces okay so he'll Maybe. move up to uh probably like go up here and then start to like move up to here 
And I'll like mm -hmm. sort of slide along this wall right here and then kind of peer in through the flap. Okay. Uh, you take a look in. This tent is sized for quite a few people, mm -hmm. but it appears to be empty at the moment. Uh, there okay. are some stones set in the middle of it in a circle as if it's going to be a, a campfire. Fire right, okay. but. Uh, does uh, it look like there's human possessions in this thing? Yeah, there are okay. some possessions. They definitely look human or, you know, not not completely monstrous. Okay, so Ferris is going to move on before uh, before whoever resides here comes back, because I think they might be in league with that that man that I just killed on the bridge. Mm. Okay. And uh, I think I'm gonna head north. Like you, you mentioned that the the tracks went like crossroads. So he probably like goes back a little bit, inspects mm. the crossroads. Kind of has a, a juncture to make. Yes. Well, but, like, give me another I think he can see off into the distance check. a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, with sure. the, let's see, plus two for occasional sense of passage, plus two for the creatures in the group. Okay. Um, so, yeah, plus four on your tracking check. 35. Definitely. Uh, it's unmistakable. The, the footprints in the dirt go straight north, and then there mm -hmm. are a few that cross back and forth east to mm -hmm. west over the goblin prints, but it's very Okay, so the goblin that... prints are obviously going north. Yeah, they're obviously okay. going north. So I'll head north toward this little barricade, and then, you know, I'll, like, squeeze... I'll, like, move up, and I guess I actually want to stay behind the barricade and, like, peer out, see if I see any signs of life beyond yeah. it. Yeah, the barricade's pretty paltry. You know, it's just some old trees that have been tossed over it. It's easy to climb, but it's definitely some sort of, you know, do not pass sign of some, mm -hmm. you know, it's clearly designed to keep people out. Yeah. Symbolically. Okay, so there's no... I don't see any, like, goblins on guard or anything or on patrol? Uh, no. I don't think you see okay. anything at all. So I'll probably, like, move around this barricade and then squeeze through these two rocks right here. Mm -hmm. And then try and just, like, very quickly move up to, like, this tree up here where I can kind of get down and hide. Okay. So you come all the way up to the tree and uh, take a look out over this area. It looks fairly desolate. The The trees and rocks in this area seem to be maybe stricken with disease or old or something because they're, mm -hmm. they're missing a lot of their uh, little pine needles and branches. Uh, it kind of just looks like this big, empty plain and forest mm -hmm. that goes all the way up to the foothills where there's a, you know, kind okay. of a and cliff's is that, edge. Is that big thing up there, is that a ramp leading up or is that the entrance to a cave? That's probably too difficult to make that distinction from okay. your distance. Okay. Um, all right, so I think Ferris will probably just kind of creep along bushes here and look for the trick. Because he, 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 he initially wanted to go up and find a place to hide, but he's going to kind of like creep around to the side a little bit and look to pick the tracks back up. Yeah, you pick it up right away. Uh, it continues heading north towards okay. the, the hillside. And I, I don't really know exactly where they are, but I'll do my best following them, like dodging from cover to cover. So like here and like behind this rock and then like over to here and then up to here. And okay. I just try and like stay behind things at all times. Sure. Why don't you roll me a perception check, please? Sure. Uh, 14. is decent for me. 14, yeah. 28. Ooh, very nice. So you take a moment to, to look around. And looking far to the north, you can see that that's definitely some sort of cave entrance. And mm -hmm. the tracks, while you can't make them out from here, do seem to be heading straight for that cave entrance. Okay. Um, this is a, a good time to talk about what you know of goblins in this area. They are reported. Occasionally, they cause trouble. Usually, they steal livestock. Mm -hmm. um, there's few actual battles between people and goblins, and this is the first you've heard of goblins taking a child. I mean, there's always stories about goblins stealing children, but this mm -hmm. is the first time that has actually it. happened. Yeah. Hmm. That's definitely a little bit weird, mm -hmm. but I think Ferris is, you know, young and naive and probably buys into those stories a great deal still of like, you know, goblins being child snatchers. Mm hmm. Uh, so he, he doesn't think too much of it. And he kind of like looks around all these like diseased, uh, you know, like trees and stuff. And being part Elven, he probably has like this, this hint of disgust in his, like this taste of just foulness in his mouth, looking at all this dead nature around him. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he starts to creep toward this cave with his bow at the ready. Okay. 
Um, well, let's get you to the mouth of the cave because with that perception check, you can definitely make your way there and realize that there's nothing in your way whatsoever. Awesome. Uh, there's no nothing threatening around here. You know, maybe a squirrel or a chipmunk or a scrub jay. Yay. All right, so I'll head up to the cave and kind of go off to the side a little bit, and then just kind of like go up to this and try and like peer inside, like okay. peek his head around the corner. Um, and I think this is going to be where we're going to take our first break. Awesome. Uh, when we come back, we're going to start exploring this cave and see what's in there. So we will see you guys on the other side of our break. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.